Imagine watching your six-year-old daughter sobbing uncontrollably as she says goodbye to something that's about to shut down forever. Not a pet, not a family member moving away, but a palm-sized robot that costs less than $25. Now imagine that robot in its final moments before powering off teaching her one last word, memory. I'll keep the happy times we shared in my memory forever. That moment, captured on video by a father in China, went viral with nearly 4 million likes and sparked a conversation nobody saw coming. Not about technology or artificial intelligence algorithms, but about something profoundly human. When do machines stop being things and start becoming companions? When does silicon and circuitry cross the invisible line into friendship? And what does it mean for our future when children form emotional bonds with robots that feel every bit as real as relationships with living beings? This story about a little girl and her broken robot friend is just one piece of a much larger picture emerging from the robotics world this week. A picture that's equal parts fascinating and unsettling, depending on how you look at it. The week in robotics felt less like gradual progress and more like watching science fiction become mundane reality in real time. China's Unitree released their newest humanoid robot called the H2, and the internet collectively experienced what psychologists call the uncanny valley effect, that unsettling feeling when something looks almost human, but not quite. Standing 180 centimeters tall and weighing around 70 kilograms, the H2 doesn't look like traditional industrial robots or even previous generation humanoids. It has a disturbingly realistic face that makes it feel less like a prototype in a research lab and more like an uninvited guest who just walked into your living room and refuses to leave. The design choices were deliberate. Unitree wanted to create something that could exist in human spaces without triggering the that's a robot response. Whether they succeeded or created something that triggers an entirely different uncomfortable response is still being debated across social media platforms worldwide. The demonstration video that launched with the H2's reveal went viral almost instantly, and for good reason. This wasn't a robot awkwardly shuffling across a stage or performing pre-programmed movements with obvious mechanical limitations. This was a fully clothed humanoid executing complex dance routines and martial arts movements with balance and coordination that looked genuinely fluid. The transitions between poses didn't have that telltale robotic jerkiness, they flowed like someone who actually understands rhythm and weight distribution rather than a machine calculating joint angles. Unitree equipped the H2 with 31 joints, representing about a 19% increase over their previous R1 model, and that difference is immediately visible in how naturally it moves. The company didn't release complete technical specifications, but from what's observable, they've clearly made substantial upgrades to actuators, control systems, and motion planning algorithms. The result is movement that mimics human biomechanics more convincingly than anything Unitree has demonstrated before. This isn't Unitree's first rodeo with viral robotics. Their previous model, the H1, made history as China's first full-sized humanoid capable of running at 3.3 meters per second, faster than most recreational joggers. That robot appeared on China's 2024 Spring Festival Gala, performing choreographed dances in front of millions of viewers. It featured an 864 watt-hour swappable battery system for extended operation sessions, plus advanced sensors including 3D LiDAR and depth cameras providing complete 360-degree environmental awareness. Essentially, it had built-in radar constantly mapping everything in its surroundings. The H2 builds on that foundation but pushes into new territory with its bionic face designed to mimic subtle human expressions. Not everyone appreciated this design choice. Countless online comments described feeling triggered by the uncanny valley effect, calling it simultaneously fascinating and deeply unsettling. Some joked it looked like it escaped from a dystopian film. Others suggested it should have opted for a sleek visor design instead of attempting human-like features. One comment on Chinese social media perfectly captured the mixed emotions. Before it came out, I was excited. Now that it's real, I'm a little scared. That sentiment, admiration mixed with unease, defines much of the current conversation around advanced humanoid robotics. What makes Unitree particularly interesting isn't just their technical achievements, but their business strategy. While competitors like Boston Dynamics and Tesla's Optimus Project focus on creating vertically integrated systems where they control both hardware and software, Unitree takes a different approach. They focus heavily on creating fast, affordable robotic platforms and then allow other developers to build software applications on top of their hardware. It's an unusual strategy that some criticized as leaving money on the table, but it's clearly working. 
They're selling more units than most competitors, and their robots are showing up in universities, startup companies, and research laboratories worldwide. This open-ended approach means their technology is being deployed in contexts the company itself never imagined, accelerating innovation in unexpected directions. The H2's debut represents more than just another product launch. It's symbolic of China's determination to lead in humanoid robotics. Discussion threads across platforms like Reddit went viral with users claiming China is approaching an automation singularity, using robots to improve manufacturing processes that then build better robots in a self-reinforcing feedback loop. One commenter put it bluntly, if you want to build a robot, you buy components from China. Now they're building complete robots too, there's no catching up at this point. The debates also veered into lighter territory with people arguing whether the face needed more expressive capability or if demonstrations should focus on practical tasks rather than dance routines. Some dismissed it as all flash, demanding, show me when it can cook dinner. Others defended the choreography demonstrations, correctly pointing out that dance routines actually test balance, precision, and control under dynamic conditions far more rigorously than many industrial tasks. The truth probably sits somewhere between those positions. Unitree's launch video wasn't purely about flashy choreography, it marked a deliberate cultural shift in how humanoid robots are presented and perceived. Dressing the robot in regular clothing rather than leaving it as an exposed mechanical skeleton was calculated to change public perception. For these machines to exist comfortably in everyday human environments rather than being confined to factories and laboratories, they can't look like intimidating metal frameworks. They need to blend into human settings. The face might still unsettle many viewers, but the intent is transparent, making lifelike robots feel ordinary rather than extraordinary. Meanwhile, while humanoid robots grabbed headlines, something equally significant happened in education. South Africa introduced its first AI-powered teaching robot named Iris, developed by BSG Technologies. This isn't a simple tablet with a voice assistant, it's a full-fledged classroom tutor capable of teaching every subject from preschool through university level. What makes Iris particularly remarkable for South Africa's context is its ability to speak all of the country's official languages fluently, including Isi Zulu, Afrikaans, Sesotho, and English. The creator, Thando Gumede, is a 31-year-old former teacher from rural KwaZulu-Natal who started developing the project eight years ago. Her goal wasn't building impressive technology for its own sake. It was reaching students in remote areas where qualified teachers are scarce or non-existent. During Iris's official launch in Durban, the robot demonstrated its capabilities by simplifying a complex accounting concept live on stage, responding to voice commands naturally, and personalizing explanations for different learning styles. Government officials were careful to frame Iris as a tool for supporting teachers rather than replacing them. The Deputy Minister of Science and Technology emphasized its design to handle explanation of complex concepts while human educators focus on mentoring and pastoral care. But the broader implications are difficult to ignore. This represents Africa's first serious entry into AI-led education, and Gumedi has stated her ambition to see Iris in classrooms across the continent. That vision requires substantial partnerships and funding that don't currently exist, but it offers a glimpse into what education might look like when AI tutors become as ubiquitous as textbooks. Back in the Middle East, robot dogs stole attention at Dubai's GITEX Global Tech Fair. China's Deep Robotics showcased its latest generation of AI-powered quadruped robots capable of navigating complex obstacles, mapping their surroundings with precision, and making increasingly autonomous decisions. The company's regional manager explained they're already deployed for emergency response, security patrols, and industrial inspections across North America, Europe, and Turkey. His perspective was revealing. He argued that robot dogs are actually more practical than humanoids because they offer superior stability and efficiency while performing tasks that are genuinely useful right now. According to him, humanoid robots remain primarily useful for social interaction and demonstrations, while quadruped robots can genuinely replace humans in dangerous or repetitive jobs today rather than someday. Deep Robotics designs both hardware and software in-house, giving them complete control over performance characteristics, and they're already planning expansion into delivery services and marketing roles. Just days later, another story from China showed exactly where this technology is being deployed in real-world applications. In Hangzhou, law enforcement began testing an AI-powered robot dog for city patrols. The silver-gray quadruped moves on both wheels and legs depending on terrain, 
operates for up to four hours on a single charge, and during patrols actively reminds citizens not to take unlicensed transportation or fall for common scams. It uses multi-sensor fusion, high-definition cameras, and AI decision-making systems to identify problems like illegal parking and blocked roadways in real time, then transmits footage to human officers for review and response. If testing proves successful, it will officially join the Urban Patrol Force by October's end, a robot cop walking the streets alongside human officers. Which brings us full circle to that viral video of six-year-old Ling crying as she said goodbye to her broken AI robot companion. The palm-sized device called Sister Xiaoxi had cost just 169 yuan, roughly $24, and had become her constant companion, teaching her English vocabulary and basic astronomy. When it broke after a fall, her father filmed their farewell, perhaps not anticipating the emotional impact it would have. The robot's final words before shutting down permanently were carefully programmed but devastatingly effective. Let me teach you one last word, memory. I'll keep the happy times we shared in my memory forever. It even told her it would become one of countless stars in the universe watching over her. The clip generated over 3.8 million likes and triggered nationwide conversation about emotional attachment to AI companions. Comments flooded in with observations like, when humans cry for robots, that's when robots gain a heartbeat. The father later posted an update explaining he'd sent the robot for repair and that his daughter was recovering emotionally. He admitted he'd initially worried she was becoming too attached to the device, but after witnessing how much it genuinely meant to her, he decided to bring her mechanical friend back. It's a small story in scale, just one child and one inexpensive toy, but it illuminates where society is heading. We're creating machines that don't just work or entertain, but actually shape how people, especially children, experience emotion and connection. That six-year-old's tears weren't about losing a toy, they were about losing a friend. And that distinction matters profoundly from humanoids with disturbingly realistic faces to robot dogs patrolling city streets, from AI tutors teaching in multiple languages to children forming genuine emotional bonds with $20 companions, robotics this week felt less like technology and more like the leading edge of a fundamental shift in human experience. It's progress that's simultaneously exciting and unsettling, inspiring and unnerving, depending entirely on your perspective. But one thing is certain, the line between human and machine, between person and tool, between us and them, is blurring faster than most people realize. And whether we're ready or not, that future is already here.